Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are back out on a job with Rick. Believe it or not, we're actually at Rick's house because he had his field go bad on his septic system. So we are out here, I'm helping put that back together, which we're gonna make a separate video on a septic system. But today, for the down and dirty, we're gonna talk about cold starts because we are in the heart of winter here in Michigan. You know, no snow on the ground, but it is cold as uh, it's about 20 degrees out this morning, so we're definitely feeling it. So I wanted to make a video about cold starting diesel motors, why we do it, why it's important uh, to do it the correct way, and a couple different techniques. So the first thing I wanted to discuss, there are a couple techniques that you can use when, when cold starting a diesel engine. And one of them that a lot of old timers jump to is this right here, starter fluid. Uh, starter fluid is a way to start cold engines but only if the engine is built for it. So let me specify. Uh, back in the old days, you didn't really have glow plugs, you didn't really have grid heaters and all this other stuff. And so if you wanted to cold start a diesel engine and it didn't get the heat required to really start the combustion process with the diesel fuel, uh, you would use starter fluid. And basically this has a much lower uh, temperature that it needs to start combustion, which is what drives the engine. If you don't know how engines work, that's a whole other topic of discussion. We're not gonna get into it. But this has a lower temperature that it needs to get to to combust. And that's why you would use starting fluid is it would at least start the engine up and get it turning over. And then once you got a couple cycles where there was enough heat built up, the engine would take over. So the way starting fluid would work is we would go to the intake of the engine and we would give this a good squirt. And I do wanna show you uh, why this works and why you have to be careful with it. So we're gonna spray it here on the trailer. And you can see this is already evaporating off really quick. And so starting fluid works not off of the liquid going in the engine, it works off of the fumes going in the engine. It is the physical fumes that go in there and ignite. And so if you're one person and you're working on a skid steer like we're about to right now, uh, and it is one that can use starting fluid, you do wanna give it a good healthy squirt probably right in that intake filter, kind of soak the filter just a little bit. And I'm talking sparingly. You don't wanna go crazy with starting fluid. Uh, and that will give you enough time to run around into the cab, actually get in the seat and turn the key before it's all evaporated off. Why do you wanna go sparingly on starting fluid? Uh, mostly because of that low temperature that it requires to combust, it's really hard on diesel engines to start with starting fluid. Starting fluid should never be your first thing you jump to, it should be the last thing you jump to because it is really, really hard on the engines. It actually causes knocking and it can really do some damage to your engine, especially if you just go crazy and keep doing it over and over and over and over and over. If you've used starting fluid a couple of times, you know, three, four times, and the engine is just not catching, uh, you need to take a different approach other than just hammering it with starting fluid because you will totally destroy a diesel engine with starting fluid if you don't know what you're doing. So that being said, let's get into modern technology. So with modern technology, we got a couple different ways that we can start engines. Um, first and foremost, you know what? I'm gonna embarrass myself here. This thing's frozen solid. Ah, I should have done this before I started the video. Ah. There we go. There we go. All right, we're gonna take that again. Okay, so now let's get into modern engines and some of the different techniques we have for starting a modern diesel engine. So by the way, uh, interesting fact, another old school method on job sites with especially big iron, like when you're talking the big size dozer, scraper, stuff like that, they would literally dig a pit and start a fire underneath the motor to warm it up. Fun fact. And you walk a very fine line between success and an insurance claim on that one. So I don't recommend taking that route. On a TV 450, which is what we're looking at, this is Rick Skid Steer. This is a 2018, I believe, machine. Uh, so this has got all of the latest, greatest technology for cold starting. Uh, it actually has a set of glow plugs in it. And then it's also got a block heater. If you're not familiar with a block heater, you're gonna see a plug. And you may see this on pickup trucks, especially if you live in the north, that plug, that's not for charging your batteries. That is a heater. It's a heating element that runs through the block of the engine and you would plug this in at night 
and let it go overnight and it would keep the engine block warm enough so that when you got in the cab the next morning uh, it would actually start up for you so that's number one that you would do especially when it gets really cold and you really have a machine that struggles with the cold uh, you would start by plugging it in overnight and letting that block heater keep the engine warm another method that manufacturers will use for cold starting an engine is what's called a grid heater correct me if i'm wrong because there's a chance i might be but I believe a grid heater actually works. It works off of the batteries of the machine. It's not a separate thing you have to plug in. It is an element, a heating element that the intake air for the engine runs over and it gets extremely hot really fast. And with the idea being it is preheating the air that is charging the engine. And that is what a grid heater is. There's a reason engines with grid heaters are very specific that you don't use starting fluid because if you spray a bunch of starting fluid in there and then you flip that key on, the grid heater fires up, it's going to ignite those fumes not inside the engine and you could cause yourself some big problems. If your buddy's back there going haywire with the starting fluid can, you could potentially have a fireball come back at him. Don't use starting fluid with a grid heater, please don't do it. Uh, if you have any questions about whether or not you should use starting fluid on your machine, the manual is generally in the cab. If not, you can download the PDF online, get the manual and check so you don't blow yourself up, please, or damage your machine. So, so grid heaters, that's another option. And then finally, we talked about glow plugs. What a glow plug is, is essentially a plug that gets red hot really quick inside the cylinder of the engine. And again, the idea is you are heating the inside of the cylinder, heating the air inside the cylinder and helping get it to up to that temperature where the machine will actually operate. So let's jump in the cab. I'll meet you guys in just a second. Uh, we'll jump in the cab and I'll show you the process for starting a machine with glow plugs. Okay guys, so we're in the cab and uh, you know what? Experienced operators goof up too. So. This power button's flashing, right? And when you hit it, it turns solid. But it wasn't doing that over and over again. Uh, I had to go get Rick. I totally forget he uses a code in this machine because I wasn't actually looking at the screen up here. I was fixated on the fact that the button was still flashing. So all that to say, cut yourself some slack if you screw up on the job because even experienced opera, I've been in case machines a hundred times in the past year and a half. And uh, we even screw up too sometimes. So cut yourself some slack. Anyway, we're going to go back to our video here. So uh, the process for this machine to start normally is you'd hit your power button and then you pretty much immediately, almost immediately hit your start button. But in a cold climate like this, when you want those glow plugs to work and do their job, we're going to look at this emblem right up here with the little curlies inside the engine. Let me get you a little closer so you can see it. That one right there. That's going to light up when I push this power button. And what that's telling us is the glow plugs are warming. And when that button or that light clicks off, that tells me that they are warm enough that I can start the engine. So we're gonna do that right now. So we're gonna power, lights on, we're gonna give it a second. And it might take a minute because it is cold out this morning. There it goes and now we're gonna start. And it fires right up. Now, this is a keyless machine, so if we were in a keyed machine, uh, you would turn the key to the on position, but not actually click it over into the uh, turnover or startup position. Same thing would happen. You're gonna wait for that glow plug light to go out, then you'll be able to fire up. If this machine had a grid heater on it, uh, I don't believe it's going to have the glow plug light. I could be wrong on that, but I don't believe it does. But still, turn the key to the on position, give it four or five seconds just to get that grid hot and heat some of the air going into the engine and then go ahead and crank it over. So that about sums it up for the process of starting the machine. I do wanna talk about what happens now that the machine is running. One of the worst things you can do is take off full bore across the job site in this machine when you just fired it up when it's this cold. Uh, as I've talked about before in other videos, your hydraulic fluid is about the thickness of honey. Your engine oil is super, super uh, heavy. Final drive oil, believe it or not, the, the oil that lubricates your final drives when it's not cold is about the consistency of honey. That's how thick that oil is. So you can imagine how thick it is on a cold morning like this. It's not going to do its job of properly lubricating the machine if it's this thick when it's this cold. 
So one of the first things I'm gonna tell you is let the machine sit for 10 to 15 minutes in this temperature. You know, we're, we're around 20 degrees right now. I personally would not run this machine for about 10 to 15 minutes before I decided to throttle it up. And even then, I'm gonna take it slow. I'm gonna go half throttle because the final drives aren't getting hot because they're not being used. It's gonna take a little bit of tracking around before those finals get a little warmed up and it starts to lubricate properly. So go easy on your equipment in the winter time. It is the worst thing you can do to fire up and within a few minutes take off full throttle, full speed across the job site. That is really hard on the equipment and it is a great way to have some premature failures on parts. So I hope this has been helpful. If you guys have any questions on cold starts or anything like that, feel free to comment down below. And really quick, my website's finally up and merchandise is available. I would love to show you some merchandise except it's so new. I haven't even gotten my first shipment yet, so be sure and check out the website. I'm going to link it up above. Uh, be sure and check that out, and uh, if you feel like supporting the channel, grab a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hat, whatever, whatever makes you feel good, and I'd really appreciate the support. So thanks again, guys, and we'll catch you on the next video.